Good afternoon. Welcome to Just Learning. That's my decision to make these uh, videos called Just Learning because uh, it's been a challenge uh, to do, start to learn how to do a lot of these things and I think I'm passing that Just Learning on to you folks. So, my name, by the way, my name is John, John Reisdyke, and uh, this is Just Learning and we're going to look at a little problem I ran into this weekend in the beautiful sunshine of northern Alberta. We were at a show and we had taken the RV and the trailer and we were serving hot dogs and hamburgers and uh, while the, during the setup on Friday I was attempting to set up the trailer which would be just a 10 minute job turned out to be two and a half hours. I'll show you what happened what the net result was. And if Bandy's around, he's the one that can attest to all this. Come on, Bandit. Come here. Come on, good boy. <laughs> Anyways, Bandit was having a nice nap in the trailer. I had backed it up to its location, and I knew he was in the front bunk. I could hear him once in a while shaking around and complaining about it. I went to jack up the trailer, and it was just simply a matter of cranking, and all of a sudden, boom, all heck broke loose. Poor Bandy, I think he just about freaked right out because his house went bang inside, and he was running all over the place inside, and what had happened was, I had broken a part of my trailer. You can see there's a piece conspicuously missing. Uh, here it is right here. And what I looked at afterwards <laughs> kind of surprised me. That's what we're going to fix here today. I don't mind mass-produced parts, and this is a quality part. It's made in the USA. At least according to Keith Fenner, it's got to be the best parts in the world. But robotic mass production does not allow for quality control, at least in my feeling. Anyways, this part, the whole front of the trailer was down on the ground. I had to use the little jacks and a hydraulic jack to get it back up again. And the hydraulic jack was an adventure in itself because I've never been able to check this. It was part of the uh, kit that came with our uh, concession trailer. And I didn't know if this thing worked or not. When I went to use it, it didn't work. Pulled the plug on it. Sure enough, I didn't have any oil. Didn't have the time to go and pick up some oil just ran to the kitchen, got some cooking oil, put it in it. That's another uh, job to do. I'm going to have to clean out that cooking oil and put some proper hydraulic oil into it. But I got the job done. I got the front end of the trailer leveled and lifted, lifted, leveled and taken care of. But I got to fix this today. Okay, now I'm going to bring it in real nice and close. And I hope I can see what I'm trying to point out to you. There's that nice little strip of rust where that unit was attached, or this unit was attached to the weld. And if I go around that piece, very slowly, my flag is throwing shadows, there's one of the weld contact points. And if I keep going around, there's a couple of more. There's another one right there, another weld contact point. The rest of this is all rust. So, with, like I said, that automated welding, this beautiful bead of weld in here was only contacting in two tiny little spots. And this failed. I thought of going back to the dealership where we uh, purchased this and was and raising some cane, but I thought, no, I think my friends on YouTube would rather see me fix this. That's what I plan on doing in this video. Uh, it's a good unit, 2,000 kgs, or 2,000 pounds. So, my first step is to remove the, the leftovers of the fitting from the front of the trailer, straight forward, a few little bolts here, and you're going to be saying, he's using a crescent wrench. Yep, because I just don't have the wherewithal and the energy today to come pounding out here with a full set of wrenches. See, 
See, that's what you got to be careful with. Now my shop teacher would have given me heck there. Initially I thought, well, I got the welder, I'm just learning on that, but I'm not doing too bad. And there we go. A little bit of rust on that thread. Then I got to thinking, okay, WWKF. or WWKD. And uh, I watch Mr. Fenner, Keith Fenner of Turn Right Machine on YouTube quite a bit because he finds little much more complex problems than this. But it came down to WWKD means what would Keith do? getting started with that and what I came up with in my thoughts was well Keith would get rid of this weld and get it down to some clean metal so that when he welded welds the new fitting on now notice the two tabs are pointed to the front of the trailer so when I put the tube on I've got to make sure that the crank is lined up with these two tabs so I'm going to make some marks on that some witness marks so that I don't have any problems. Thank God they welded these studs on so I don't have to muck with them. So we're finished here. Got the plate off and again I'm going to have to make sure that I line up the front of the crank with this when I put it back on and I'm going to have to clean off all this rust and paint in here and then see if I can get a good, uh, a good penetration by the numbers they give me on the welder to put this back on. That's the plan. So now let's go into the shop. Uh, here we are. Back in the old shop again. Just put that down here. Uh, well, I just looked at this and... I'm not going to be able to chuck this up in the four, three jaw the way I'd like. That's going to be back and forth. But then again, I could switch to the four jaw. Just a minute here. Uh, yeah, uh, like I was saying, hmm. this isn't going to be the neat fit up I thought it was going to be in this in this chuck. Let's see if we can get it set up. Okay, we're going to work. Uh, 
So here I am doing all this stuff to make the video, and I forget the most important rule of all. You gotta plug in your lathe, John. fridge line. I've got three fridges running out there right now. Four fridges on this one line. That's a little bit too much. This is a free circuit. There we go. Okay, now we got power. Check it. Click. Yes. See, I took out my chuck. That's square. Tighten it up a bit. See what happens if I turn this thing on. Don't stand in the way of the uh, piece. Good. Now, I've checked that the uh, bit right here clears the chuck. And I might not even have to cut too deep. All I want to do is take this old weld and from the way it ends right here, I can see that this wasn't a hand job. This was a machine job because it suddenly ends and there's a lip here. Uh, myself, guy with a little bit of pride in his work, is going to turn around and make sure that that doesn't show. And I look around the inside of this bore and this weld isn't even penetrating the plate in about two or three spots. It is touching up against the outside of the barrel, but it never made contact. Here's a penetration, one penetration, and here's the second penetration, right down at the bottom here. The only place is that it penetrated the tube. Now, a weld has to penetrate at, to make contact between the two pieces. The weld itself will be stronger than the original pieces, according to the books, but not if you don't have contact. So I'm going to have to clean this off. That's not a hard job. Clean that. Take a wire brush to it. Clean it off. Get rid of the paint. Reset these pieces together and then weld it again. And see if I can get penetration onto that tube. Now that tube is thick enough. That's got to be 3 sixteenths of an inch thick that I shouldn't have to worry too much about blow through. So let's clean up this act here and we'll go from there. Just make contact here. So I'll lock down the carriage and go in. Well, I don't hear any more of that sound. Come back out again. And we'll go in ten thousandths. And we'll do another cut. See if that will work just about as good going out. Take another 20. No, this doesn't like it. It's moving my uh, chuck. So we're back off 20, 30, come back into 20. It's 
pretty loose. Rolling the 20 again.